I've been rendering a scene for a while now in the Maxwell renderer and I'm going to stop it. It's uh, Maxwell renders in 32 bits and I'm using something called the multi light function which gives me these various sliders and the sliders control the contributions of the different uh, light sources in the scene. Right now I have three light sources. I have a light that you don't see which is causing this spill of light here. I have lights from the light bulbs and I have an overall uh, kind of open shade daylight um, sky light source. Right now Maxwell is writing out an MXI file which is a format that it uses. It's writing it out in a specific location but I'm going to as soon as it's done, it's a fairly high resolution file, I'm gonna write out my own MXI in a place, let's see, save MXI as, and I'm going to save it in this file here, which I've already actually saved it as, but I'm going to pretend, let's pretend we're saving it for the first time. That's writing out now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that MXI file in Photoshop, and I'm going to repeat the multi light setup within Photoshop because Maxwell renders in 32 bits, it's actually quite nice what you can do with the data that it produces. So in just a moment, it will be finished writing out this fairly high resolution multi-component uh, file. And we will switch over to Photoshop. In fact, I'll switch over to Photoshop now because something I actually want to talk about for a second. And that is <clears throat> the difference between 8, 16, and 32-bit images. Um, I have a, uh, a middle gray color here. And if I use the brush and I make a, a splotch out of middle gray like that. Actually, maybe, maybe make the brush a little smaller. So I make a splotch out of middle gray like that. I'm sorry, one more time. I'm going to make a new layer. Leave the background alone. I'm going to make the splotch on this new layer. And I'm going to make the layer have a blend mode of linear dodge add. So now it's adding to the black level below. Now I'm going to use the Alt key and the this uh, pointer here, arrow, to pull off copies of it. And so what I'm doing is I'm duplicating and duplicating and duplicating and duplicating and duplicating. Now, um, this is a, a middle gray image, but the more I duplicate it, the more it blows out toward white. So you can see it's quite overexposed now. And if I, you can see there's a whole stack of, of, of layers here. If at the top of this stack, I make an exposure node and I dim it, you can see that the white just turns to gray immediately. And there's nothing you can do to reclaim any of that. If I go to 16 bits, that was an 8-bit file. If I go to image mode 16 bits, and I go back to this um, exposure node, the same thing happens. It goes immediately gray. Let me zero this out again. Now if I go to image mode 32 bits and don't flatten you can see that it's changed a little bit but there's still this very large area of flat white but watch what happens when I dim it using the exposure node all of that is reclaimable so the uh, 8 bits and the 16 bits are storing various kinds of integers and the 32-bit is a different animal altogether and it's storing floating point data and so even when you think you've blown it out it's completely recoverable and that's what we're going to be doing with the Maxwell file so if I say file open and I open up that render and I'm opening up in a Maxwell MXI file now the reason I'm able to do that in Photoshop is because Maxwell provides a plugin for that so it's saying 8, 16, 32. Well, I mean, based on what we just looked at, 32 is, seems to be the way to go. So we open it up. And what we're going to find is the first thing it does is it has a kind of a flattened version of it. But the eyeball is going to be turned off on it. But it's a reference image for you to look at. And then below that are going to be the various components from the different lights. 
And there's also going to be a background. But the background in this case is black, and we don't ever see that background because our elements take up entirely all of the frame's real estate, so we never get to see the background. So here's that eyeball turned off that I was talking about. So there's the flattened version of the image. I'm going to throw that away. We don't need it. And here's the background I was talking about. I'm going to throw that away, too. So now what's left is we have this, uh, this light on the post. We have the light bulbs themselves. And we have the uh, skylight. So if I take this upper one and I give it an exposure node, and, and then I use the Alt and drag and duplicate it to there and duplicate it to there. And then Alt and clip on the line in between and on the line in between. And I'm clipping it. So now we have these different things that go with the different layers. So if I take the exposure node that goes with this first thing and turn it slowly up, you can see that I can brighten and dim that. Um, what I want to add it, what I want to do is add that to linear dodge add, add that to the lower layer, which has the um, light bulbs in it, which I can turn up to the point where the light bulbs are significantly lighting the scene. If you wanted to do that, the light bulbs wouldn't really do that, but or uh, or I can turn the light bulbs all off altogether. And what you're seeing there are the frosted glass on the bulbs being lit by that other light source. That's why it looks like some of those bulbs are on. They're actually not on. Um, then finally, I take this layer and I linear dodge, add it with what's below it, and the sky comes in. So here's the sky component. And you know we can take the sky completely out or make the sky so bright that it looks like daylight. And the cool thing about this stuff is that because we're looking at Photoshop layers, all of the normal, you know, things from Photoshop apply. Like, for example, I could put a grad into this uh, mask and then play with that layer so that now what we've done is brightened up the bottom a great deal, but not the top, or vice versa. So you can imagine, you know, you have all kinds of control over every part of the frame and the way that the lights add to each other. So finally, what you might want to do is, uh, after you've done some work in 32 bits, maybe you want to finally write it out in 16 bits or maybe, maybe 8 bits. Um, so let's say image mode. Let's put it to 8 bits. Um, let's merge it. So what we see is... Actually, let me, let me merge it first. Layer... Flatten image. Um, so now what we have is image mode 8 bits. So what you find is that it immediately changes its appearance greatly. And you go, oh, well, how am I going to get out of 32 bits? Um, what I find is the best way to do it is to switch this method to um, exposure and gamma, and then leave the exposure at 0, and leave the gamma at 1. And that gives you the same look. So that takes you successfully down to 8 bits finally.